Okay, let's get some more work done on the Bina view. Um, I actually didn't plan to get another video out this soon, but I've been working away at it, and um, and it's time to uh, assemble the lifting mechanism. So, just to kind of recap on what we're doing here, uh, last video we saw this. Now I've added a few more of these slides in here since then. But this is the rack that holds all of these slides, and those are my made-up terms. I don't know if they're the right names for these parts or not. But each one of these slides will hold a, um, a digit, and this one is for the letter J. And um, I'm still waiting to get those copied onto uh, transparency. Um, I kind of tried it myself here at home and it did not work because um, I have an inkjet printer and the plastic that I put through it, uh, the ink just smeared. Plus even if the, now there are right transparencies for ink jets, ink jets. I did a little bit of research online and there is inkjet transparency paper, which I don't have. But even if the ink would have dried, it was really thin, and light kind of shined right through it. And um, so what I plan on doing is I plan on going somewhere, a professional print shop, and have them actually print the transparencies for me. Um, but because of the um, stay-at-home thing going on now, this project is not more important than... than uh, not helping to spread COVID. So that can wait. Um, I don't know when I'll be able to get to that point. Until then, I've just been printing more of these um, slides here. Now, if the transparencies don't work, because uh, that is a concern, I'm going to have 40 layers of transparencies. Now, theoretically, the transparency is clear, so, so should 40 sheets. But realistically, there will be a lot of... Um, what I'm looking for. Um, not transparency as you stack more and more layers up. So just in case the transparencies don't work, plan C is to 3D print them. Um, here are, here's a 3D printed um, mask. And if we take another one and we put it over top, you can see that if you line them up just right, it's completely blank. But if you drop one, a whole size, you can see through it. So here's one with the number one. So again, if everything's lined up, um, you can see the number one. But if they're all in line, then you can't see it. So there's the one, there's not the one. So it is possible to 3D print them, but that was a pain in the neck. Um, worst case scenario would have worked, but this is plan C. Uh, the transparencies are plan A. I do not know what plan B is yet. I'm only assuming there's an easier way than this. We'll figure that out if the transparencies don't work. So this is on hold till now until I can get to a print shop. So again, what we need to do is we need something that will raise all of these up and then let them drop. So if we take a look at this again, if I hold them all in, flip it over, I need something that will rest along the bottom, that will push them all up and then let them drop. So this bar right here will sit like that. And that bar, get this back down, that bar is skinny enough, it'll fit between the keyways and not interfere in the, in the keyways there. And so I need for this to just move up and then drop back down. So I'll show you what I come up with. I actually thought of about, I don't know, three or four different ways to do it. Um, and I just picked away and went with it. If it doesn't work, I don't know what I'll do then. So let's just assemble this thing. Uh, starting off with, we'll just take a look at the parts here. This is the base. Uh, the base is drilled and tapped twice on each edge for a 440, that is to take a 440 screw, uh, three 
on each side here. And then I have two taps for an 832, and that is what's going to mount this thing down, permanent in the enclosure. So just two screws coming up from the bottom will lock that down. Again, this is the top piece that will move up and down. I have two hinge assembly pieces here. The hinges were made from one inch hinge stock like this. I just bought a couple of pieces a foot long and uh, cut it lengthwise this way and then welded three of those pieces together to make this three jointed hinge and we'll see how that works later. Now, when I say welded together, I fully intended to TIG weld it because after all, I did buy a TIG welder, but after trying it on some scrap pieces for about half an hour, um, which I do realize that's not nearly enough practice, um, I, I came to the decision that my lack of ability should not hold up the progress here. So instead of TIG welding it, I actually Aluma welded it. Now, this is not technically welding because you're not melting the base the base material. This is more like brazing. Um, it's more like brazing aluminum. Now this stuff, I absolutely love it. Um, after about five minutes of practice, I was able to do very well with this versus after 30 minutes worth of practice on the TIG, I was still sucking pretty badly. Uh, I just need more practice on the TIG is all. Plus, not only that, but I'm trying to teach myself how to TIG weld really, really thin aluminum. I'm setting myself up for failure by trying to learn how to weld something like this. Uh, I need to start with something thicker, and I should probably even start with mild steel before I start tackling really thin aluminum. So, this Aluma weld rod, um, again, I'm not going to claim to be an expert at it. Um, I don't really think I should show you how to do it right now because, again, I'm not really that great at it. Um, so I don't feel like I'm in a position to teach others how to do it. But here's what it looks like. This one was the first one that I did, and it's a little wide and unruly here. And that's the second one I did. It's a little better, but still a little all over the place. And here's the third one I did. It got a little carried away in the middle. This is the last one that I did. And um, I tell you, it's like a stack of melted dimes. Um, the, the thing about the, uh, the Aluma weld, you're not going to get the nice little, you know, signature weld marks like the little curves like the stack of dimes you're not going to get that it's just a melted puddle this does not flow like solder um, or normal brazing it just you know it, it just doesn't do that and it is surprisingly strong uh, I practice welded a couple of pieces first and then tried to break it apart and I was bending the base material a little bugger there I can fly off I was bending the base material before that finally broke. This stuff is surprisingly strong. And I didn't even put any on that backside here just because I think that looks much better than that. And just that, for what this is going to do, is perfectly strong enough. I, you know, There's no way this is going to be under enough stress to even think about uh, damaging that, that bond right there. This will work perfectly fine. And plus, this is a side that won't be seen. Um, this whole thing is going to be like this when it's all done. So, Aluma weld to the rescue when you're not a really good TIG welder yet. I will be, don't worry. I, I plan on eventually getting good at TIG welding one of these days. But like I said, I didn't want it to hold up the progress here. I also made eight of these little flippy links. That is the technical term. And... We have two of these axles. This is mild steel, turned down on the lathe, uh, threaded on each end for a 440, and I got some 440 lock nuts that will go on the end of those, um, and these little flippy links go on the shaft of there. And again, two of those, and drilled in the center and tapped for a 632 thread, and I have a 632 rod there. So, let's start assembling this thing. First thing we can do, oh, and plus the rod, um, 
cut a slot in the end and drilled it for a little cutter pin. Not sure if I'm going to use that feature yet or not, but let's let's get this thing put together. First thing we want to do is put the hinge pieces on the base plate. And we'll take one of these here and one of these. Like so, notice it looks like a mistake. Well, yeah, you'll notice on the actual hinge stock that I used, um, it has holes in it. I, If I would have known better, instead of one inch, I would have gotten quarter inch with no holes. Uh, that hole, that spot that you see there is where one of those holes was and didn't catch it till after I put the hole in there. That's okay. It'll still work. No big deal. It just looks like a mistake. Um, but that's only because it is. So those go there and we'll take number 440 screws and screw those together. Oh, and I want Loctite because this thing is going to be activated by a solenoid constantly jumping up and down and I don't want anything working loose. So we'll screw all of these on with Loctite. And yes, I know you're not supposed to put Loctite in aluminum threads, but if all goes well, this will never come apart again. Okay, so those are screwed on like so. Next thing we want to do is take our threaded rod, one of our axles, Screw it on like that. By the way, I drilled and tapped 20 number 440 holes, and I did not break a single tap. Broke a drill bit, but I did not break a single tap. And then we take the other one, and we screw it on like so. That one doesn't have to go on too far. Like that's good. And this one needs to be the same distance as those holes here. Like that. Next. We're going to take our flippy links. We're going to put two on each one. That's a, there it goes. Hold it tight. Like that. And a fiber lock nut. All right, so that part is done. And we'll just Double check. Need to unscrew that a little bit. And then these I'm going to screw on. Right there. And I do want Loctite on these as well, but I think I'm going to assemble it and then take these out one at a time and Loctite them after it's all done and assembled. I think that would probably be better. So tight. All right, so those are in. So hopefully you can kind of see now how this is going to work. Um, so when you pull this rod this way, which again, this is going to be driven by a solenoid. So when that gets pulled, 
it lifts up that top tray, and when it gets pushed, then that top tray can drop down. And these hinges are to hold everything parallel. So let's go ahead and get those in. And there is some binding that I don't like, but I think I can work that out with some fine tuning, a um, little bit of shimming. I'm not going to Loctite these in just yet because I'm probably going to have to take it apart and reassemble it a few times until it all just works nicely. I'm not even going to put that metal screw in there yet because that's not really needed. Now, originally, these that I'm screwing on now were going to be on the bottom of that bar. I'm going to get these tight. So, again, originally, this was going to be on the bottom of the bar, more like it is here. But that would have posed um, some interesting challenges with getting those screws in from the bottom side. And plus, um, this is probably more than likely going to need a shim on top for proper spacing between the track or the, the tray with all the slides on top of it. So I will 3D print a piece that will go here that will bring it up above the level of those screws so that will regain that nice top flat surface. Now looking at it this way, we can tell there's a problem. Those are straighter than those. So to fix that, hmm, I bet if I unscrew the rod, all right, so there's all the way down and It's all the way up. Now this only needs to move up and down like less than two millimeters. Uh, here, it only needs to move. It needs to push it up. So if the, the things are here, for example, or let's say, let me get something better. If, if it's in like that, it only needs to bring it up high enough to allow that to flip over. So it only needs to move like that much, no more than that much. If it moved more than that, it would just fall, the things would fall out. So it only needs to move like, let's say that much. Let's just make it two millimeters right there. It only needs to move two millimeters we could still say two and a half. That's better. Two and a half millimeters. That's all it needs to move. So this only needs to do like, like that much. That's all it's got to do. So this seems like overkill for what I need. This seems way too big for what I need. Um, but, but, it should work. Um, I need to do some fine tuning. I probably need to, I don't know, put some shims, shave some stuff. Again, right now one of my problems is getting the um, that rod spaced properly. But um, we'll get it. It'll work. There's a few minor little issues, but it'll work. I just got to tweak it a little bit. Um, but that's that's the plan for now. That's, um, and again, that will be setting. That will be setting under all of those. Like that. So, anyways. Um, now, I did order the solenoid. I'm just going to see if I can get that rod back in there. I did order the solenoid 
to pull this to lift it up and I ordered a 12 volt solenoid that was rated for 20 newtons which is about four pounds give or take a little bit hopefully four pounds worth of pull um, is enough and screw this back in It'll work. Hopefully, four pounds of pull is enough to just do that again. That's all it has to do, just like that. That's a really good demonstration right there. That's all it has to do. It's a little bit tight, but like I said, I need to clean up some of those joints, put a few shims in it, um, loosen it up a bit, and that should be good to go. So let's just verify from there. We're at 27.7. And then there, we're at 30 point, at 31, 31. So this right here is all it has to do. And that's not too hard to make it do that. That's kind of a sweet spot. Any lower it gets tight and any higher it gets tight. So that's kind of what it wants to do, just like that. Originally, I wasn't even going to have these pieces on it, but then I realized that top plate would be able to, you know, move that way like I didn't want it to. So these keep that top bar from shifting fore and aft, keeping it parallel with that bottom bar. And one other reason I went with this idea is because I did not want anything rubbing or otherwise chafing. For example, one idea that I had was just to have that top bar and just have uh, the rod connected to a cam. So for example, it would just pull it and push it like on a roller, like push it up this way. But that would have parts rubbing on each other, causing too much friction, um, plus they're not physically connected. I wanted everything physically connected and I didn't want any parts rubbing or sliding on each other that could cause unnecessary friction. So once I uh, fine tune that, and keep in mind, this is its first assembly. This is the first time it's ever been put together. Um, so we'll just hope that uh, that works. Like I said, I need to clean it up, free it up, but we should be good to go. Um, I can't remember if I said this or not. The solenoid that I ordered, I ordered a 12 volt solenoid. What I got in the mail was a 24 volt solenoid. I contacted the seller. He has not replied back yet. Um, but again, that should be rated for about four pounds of pull. If that doesn't work, then I will probably buy an automotive like a door lock solenoid. Those big clunky, you know, door lock solenoids. That should be more than adequate. And even if that 20 Newton solenoid isn't strong enough to directly pull it, well, I can magnify the force because connected to here, I'm going to have a bar probably just something like this. It's only pulling is all. And if I attach that to a lever that pivots here and the solenoid is connected here, if that distance is twice that distance, well, that'll give me twice the pulling force. So I just went from four pounds to eight pounds. And you already saw this only needs to move a couple of millimeters. The throw in that solenoid is 10. So even if I went two to one, I would double the force. I would cut the movement in half, which would be perfect for what I need. So it should work. It should work. Um, but I'm, I feel like I've been talking and rambling on way too much. Um, I'm sure there could have been an easier way to do this. There almost definitely has to be an easier way to do this. Um, but this is what I'm going to go with. Hopefully it works fine. And I'm going to stop talking, going to stop rambling on and let you get on with your day. If you have any thoughts or comments or questions or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, just be nice. And as always, until next time, thanks for watching.